Okay. We've got two points. The slope is rise divided by run. Rise has a meaning, run has a meaning, and those meanings are essential, which is why I don't want you to be using right now y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Perfectly good formula that totally replaces understanding of what anything means. It's easier to understand in terms of rise over run than it is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Because you can forget that y2 minus y1 is the rise and x2 minus x1 is the run. And understanding what the slope means, it's essential to understand what the rise means and what the run means. And you'll see what I mean. I stop using the word means so much. Okay, ready? So, rise, run. What, what, what does it mean by rise and run? Well, uh, assuming the x-axis is in this direction and the y-axis is in this direction and the origin's over here somewhere, <coughs> the fundamental triangle say for two points. The hypotenuse is a line segment between the two points. End points are the two points. Okay? So, do I now know something about the fundamental triangle for these two points? Could I sketch something? What could I sketch? I've got two points, and there's a line segment between the points. I can sketch that line segment, right? You don't need to know anything else about the fundamental triangle to sketch the line segment, and that line segment's going to be the hypotenuse. Okay? So we sketch a line segment between the points. And this is hypotenuse. And the legs are parallel to the coordinate axis. Okay. So, on your paper, complete the triangle. The legs have to be parallel to the coordinate axis. copying down what I wrote on the board. That wastes time, and I don't see what I'm looking for. I just see a copy of what I wrote on the board, which will in any case be posted to your website this afternoon. Okay? So when we do something in class, don't sit there copying a bunch of words on the board. Do what I ask you to do, and then if you have time, copy, because that can help you focus your attention on what you're doing, it can help you draw your attention uh, to some of the details, but you don't need otherwise to even write it down because you can always go back to the board pictures I put at the end of the posting and copy it down then, if you think it's necessary to copy it down, and often it's a good idea, okay? But right now, what we're doing is we're drawing the rest of this fundamental triangle. And that only requires putting an X here, an X here, a line between them, and then a couple of lines for the legs, right? Okay? And then you can go back and fill in anything you want to. But do that first. Okay? Also, when you draw diagrams, a lot of times you're going to need to label them 
And you might want to make them bigger than most of you are doing, although you know, what I'm saying looks pretty good. It's a little small because I'm going to add a bunch of labeling and you're going to want to write it down. So I want you to write something down on it. It might be hard to get it in. Get in the habit of making bigger pictures. Okay. Yeah, what I'm seeing looks very good. I didn't get to look at everybody. Uh, but, you know, sometimes people kind of block it. And, 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 uh, sometimes I, I would have needed a magnifying glass, but not usually. Okay. What I saw looked like what I wanted to see. That so was good. Again, you got the idea? That's the first thing you do. When I ask you to do something, I'm going to walk around and look over your shoulder. I don't want to see you writing down what I wrote on the board. I want to see you showing me what I'm looking for, okay? Because that gives me the feedback to know if you're getting it or not, okay? Okay. So, well, there are two ways I could do this. Most people drew it like so, and you know, both ways are fine. And we'll note that the coordinate axes are at a right angle, and these are parallel to the coordinate axes, so they have to be at a right angle. Okay? Okay? I could also have drawn it, and I'll draw this one small because I'm not going to have to label it. Hopefully, I'm drawing it somewhere out of the way. It could have been like this. You have a choice. Whatever's more convenient in terms of whatever else you have on your paper, you can draw it either way. You end up with the same result. The rise is going to be the same. The run is going to be the same. Okay? Now, there's a little more. We draw an arrow on the hypotenuse that goes from the left most point to the right most point. Okay? It actually doesn't matter in what direction you draw the arrow, but that's the traditional direction. So that's what I kind of want you to do. Okay? And then, well, that arrow takes you from one point to the other, right? Okay. Now, if I wanted to go from this point to this point along the legs, in the same direction, starting at this point, ending at this point, can you draw me the arrows on the legs that would take you from here to here? I mean, the arrow here gets you from here to here. If I follow the path in the direction of the arrow, I get from here to here, right? Now I've got to go over the two legs. In what direction do I have to go? So just draw the little arrows. Now if your picture is small enough, I won't be able to see the arrows. Uh, that's okay. Try to get in the habit of making them big. Does it matter which direction they're pointing? What? Does it matter what direction you're pointing? Yeah, you're going from the same point that you started with on the hypotenuse. Okay, so they all need to point to here. They all, well, they all need to go in the direction. That you need to start at the same point you would start mm -hmm. to go from here to here on the hypotenuse, from left to right. Okay. Okay? Now, if you did it right to left, you'd still get the right answer. But right now, I want to be as concrete as possible. Okay? So most of you have it, you know, that you, you got to go like this. Should be pretty obvious, right? And that's what I saw in most of your papers. Some of you hadn't gotten around to getting your pen to the paper, but I think you were going to do it, right? Okay? Make sense? Okay. Well, then... What's the displacement from here to here? Displacement is distance, but with direction. If I'm going in the positive direction, the displacement is positive. If I'm going in the negative direction, the displacement is negative, right? So what's the displacement from this point to this point? Four. It's four. How'd you get that? Five plus four equals nine. 
Well, the x coordinate goes from 5 to 9, right? Now, that should be obvious, but let's just draw a little more picture. If the x-axis was here and it'd actually be lower, then this point would be 5, and this would be 9, and clearly, to go from here to here, the displacement, which I'll write as delta x, the change in the x value, is 4, right? So we understand everything I did there? Okay. And then I can write... Run equals delta x equals 4, right? Now, what would you write down for the rise, and where would you write it? is this side of the triangle. And if that's not totally clear to you, it probably means that when you were taught this, you were taught a formula without any meaning, which is typical. Okay? So you want to just be aware of that. And I'll try to, try to fix it. Okay, so here's the rise. Now, following the notation I used here, the rise would be the change in your y coordinate because of course if your y axis is here and of course it's over here someplace but you know you come over to this point and you come over to this point and this point is at like seven everywhere here across and y equals twelve here. So from 7 to 12, going from here to here, this segment delta y is 5. Okay? Now I write rise equals delta y equals 5. Okay? And if you didn't write rise equals delta y equals 5, well, notice that I wrote run equals delta x equals 4. I want you to write that because it reinforces what you're doing. And for the homework, when I ask you to do this on fundamental problems, I want you to write it out in detail. I want all the detail that I have in this picture. I'll give you another one in a minute. I'll just ask you to show me all the detail. If you miss something, and if I find people are generally missing, missing something, come back and talk about it. Okay, so run is 4, rise is 5. Slope equals rise over run equals 5 over 4. That should be clear. Slope here is 5 fourths. It's okay to also write that as a decimal, but if it's a fraction, write the fraction. Okay. 
and then I put a rectangle around this thing. Now, another thing. I wrote the rise here. I didn't write it down here. I didn't write it on the floor. I didn't write it on the ceiling. I wrote it here where it's clear that that's where somebody's going to look for it. Okay? So he wrote it over here. So I wrote it. That's okay. You wrote it. Okay? But let's make sure you write it in the right place so you have a very specific, concrete way of labeling these trials. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, so I've got a couple more of what you to do, and I'm going to have to uh, wash some boards because I neglected to do that. Okay. So now I want you to do the same thing for the points negative three, six. And four, negative two. And then for the points A, B, and C, D. I want you to show me fundamental triangles for both of those pairs of points. <coughs> Copy that down because I'm going to set it over here in a minute so I can wash the boards behind it. You can always look over there. If you want a closer look, you're welcome to get up and walk over to it. 